You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another show lined up for y'all. We're going to talk to a music artist all the way from Houston, Texas. Man, that's not that far away from San Antonio. We're going to talk to MJ the Rapper. And we're going to talk about her latest song, her latest music that's out. It's called Not Girl Summer. And without further ado, I just want to first welcome MJ to the show and say, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? Doing awesome, man. So you... We're going to learn a little bit about you because you've been making music, what, since 2014 or was it before that? Um, Before that, since around 2011. So you had an album that you released back in 2014, uh, Live Through Me, and we will learn a little bit about that. But before we do, man, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. So I was actually born in Redondo Beach, California, Um, moved to Florida. So I've been around the world, I, 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 <laughs> around the time I was uh, six years old, mm-hmm. um, went to school there, graduated school there, uh, went to college in the land, Florida. That's where I started doing music at Stetson University. I was originally a computer science major, but I didn't really want to do that. And so music has always been in and out of my life since I was around seven years old. Um, and been pursuing um, being a rapper, being an artist. Um, I actually want to start playing the role and like even like producing some of my own beats as well, kind of like doing the Missy Elliott thing. That was, that's been a dream of mine. But basically, been in Houston, Texas for the past five years to take it to the next level. Been focusing throughout this last year on taking my artistry to the next level. Um, gaining more fans, getting more people to listen to what I got to offer and in store. And that's pretty much the gist with me. You came to Houston and Texas. Did you have family that was here or was this like a turn the page? Let's start from scratch. It was a little bit of both. So I didn't have family that was here, but someone here knew someone in my family and they offered me to come here and stay with them a little bit and get my feet, <clears throat> get on my feet some. And so that's what led me here. I was in Florida back in Pensacola after graduating college. Um, I was tired because I was living with literally all of my family in one roof. And that was an interesting experience. Then I was living with my mom. And then it's like the Florida music scene, not that it's not good, but it's, it's, it's not as much, especially if you're not in Miami, which is the main known hotspot. Hmm. So my dream has actually always been to be back in L.A., California, you know, where the entertainment industry is thriving. But in the meantime, I've been in Houston working on my artistry. Um, taking things to the next level, finding my voice as an artist, things like that. And when you decided that you wanted to pursue music professionally as a career, you mentioned earlier about wanting to get into production and producing and stuff like that. Did you find people in your circle that can help you get into the studio? What was that process like where you were able to create songs? It started all the way back in college when I was at Stetson University. Um, I switched my major to being a digital arts and audio, but basically do more of a creative side. So I did find some fellow producers other students who are producing music. Um, I had one student who like expanded on demo that I had made. Um, My old music is extremely rough. Um, Some my newer, more current music, like I said, like being in Houston has helped me a lot. Like I've worked with several great up and coming artists in their own right, who has basically helped me to, you know, find my voice, find the type of beats that I like. 
Um, my first, very first album we had mentioned it earlier, Live Through Me, um, I had pretty much self-produced it. To be honest, like I said, it's very rough, more so on the experimental end because I had never really produced before, so that was a whole new thing. And since then, I haven't really been able to do as much self-producing as I would like. But that's pretty much the beginning of just people, fellow students, my fellow, you know, my fellow classmates helping me out in college. And then coming here, where to me, Houston is the home of some of like some very great producers, production talent. And listening to what especially a lot of the more underground producers have, um, that helped me a whole lot as well. Were you able to get in inside a studio in, in Texas or were you still working with people from Florida? When I first got here, um, it took me a little bit at first to like find the people that you need to find in order to get into the studio. Um, I had recorded a mixtape. And I record the first studio that I really record at was with engineers who are more so who are more knowledgeable in producing rock music, like live instrumentals and things like that. So at first it was a little hard. And then I was still trying to figure out like I had issues with my living situation. Um, so when I first got here, I will admit I wasn't as in, in ingratiated at first in terms of finding like-minded in order to get into the studio. Now, after I released my mixtape, and one thing that helped me a lot was being more active on social media and being more open about my music, I did find other artists who were up and coming or who were a little bit more established who I was able to get in the studio with and more so studios that were known to be better able to work with rap artists, hip hop artists, um, things of that nature. Once again, we're talking to MJ, the rapper, and you also been, I would say just growing, like you kind of mentioned earlier in the interview, growing as an artist. So, did you have someone that you can use as a mentor to help guide you with the music business? One of the main artists who eventually had started to take me under the wing, um, his name was Bama Baby. His name is Bama Baby. He's an R&B artist, uh, makes a lot of R&B, some dance music as well. Um, he was one of the, he was the first one who was really, who took me under his wing showed me the ropes some, started to help develop me more as an artist. Um, after that, I started doing things more so on my own. I do have several more friends within, the, especially the independent scene. Um, there is like a growing independent scene here in Houston that's separate than what most people mainly know it for which is more so, you know, like the chop and screw and 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 more so like the trap and that type of music. Um, there are other independent artists who I work with. Um, I'm currently reaching out in order to refine like a new team or a new mentor. Um, I've been having to work on more to put myself out there and network because I'm not always very social, but I have been making it more of a point to network and get to know other um, people in within around the area um, who have been doing this longer, who know more, who know how the industry works. So that's been my journey in terms of like mentorship, uh, working with other artists, working with the mentor, things of that nature. It kind of sounds like you're heavily involved throughout the whole process as far as not just being an indie artist, but you sounds like you're very heavily involved from the beginning to the end. Like you don't have you know, X, Y, and Z people doing all this stuff for you. You're kind of doing this and learning as you go. I am completely solo dolo. I've actually been praying that that changes because, I mean, it's, it, it is a blessing in disguise because you get to be more creative and you get the whole say and the final say in the music that you make. Um, but 
I'm I'm completely self independent. I'm self funded. I'm independent. I do everything on my own. Um, I part of the reason why I do want to go to LA eventually is because um, I and like I said, I've spoken to other artists who say as soon as they got in LA, they got their own team and things of that nature. Um, but yes, right now I I do everything. I, I fund myself. I of course I love writing my own. I do write my own music. That leads us to your latest music that you have out there right now, and that's Not Girl Summer. First and foremost, what is the concept of this song, and what is the meaning that you're trying to give to the audience? So the concept of the song is basically going, it's supposed to be an irony, like even the title Not Girl Summer playing on Hot Girl Summer, Mm -hmm. because especially after everything that happened with COVID, we were looking to get back out in the summer. And then, and so the song is pretty much about a depression period that I went through early in the summer. Um, I was in a car accident. Thank wow. goodness I did not come out with any injuries or anything of that nature. But it was it, my car had to be towed, and in the midst of that time frame, I was in, stuck at home for a minute, having to figure things out. Where do I go from here? Because that was a major event. And in terms of being more open about my mental health as well, you don't hear a lot of songs, especially a lot of female rappers rap about things of that nature in terms of, you know, being depressed, even going through periods where you're thinking about suicide, um, the dark spaces. So it really is a song that is very a lot more personable for me. Just me being more honest, being more open, rapping about something that I can that I've lived through, that I can relate to. So that's basically was the gist of creating that song. It's funny because when I first got that beat, and it's more of an up tempo beat because again, it's like almost you know playing on irony. I had I did originally think about doing a song where it was just going to be more you know the usual happy, uh, go lucky, that type of thing. But then it's like the more that I thought about it and I'm just like, well, you know, I, I could just be honest as well and do something different. So that's basically what was the concept behind Not Girl Summer. You shot a music video to this. How were you able to put all those plans together? Because I'm sure that was interesting. I have been planning on, and it's actually been my goal to, focus more on visuals um, because I believe music videos and being visual and being out there and having more content plays a big role in taking that next step as an artist. So I had been planning my former single Moonlight. I actually wanted to do a music video to that first, but then my accident happened. And so with my accident, it expired this song. And then I just figured with this song, well, since it's still summer, we're still in the midst of summer. Um, it's hot outside, you know, pool weather, things of that nature. I figured, well, I might as well just take advantage of the time, what we're, what we're doing right now. And so I had the person who shot it, his name is Steve. He's on Instagram as Video Steve. I had heard of him because a lot of other independent artists have worked with him and I have followed him and I knew him to work several events that I performed at. And so I just reached out to him and I said, you know, let's go ahead on and let's, let's, you know, do a music video together. And in terms of like the concept of it, it is interesting how it came about. Um, I was able to get back on my feet finally after the accident. And I worked very hard to be able to afford to shoot the video. Also, where we had filmed the video as well. We actually had rented a pool at someone's personal house for a certain amount of time frame. So I funded that. And basically the video is, again, it's like a play on... Because, you know, the usual videos that you see now, especially, again, in terms of female rappers is, you know, female rappers hanging out, bikinis, you know, looking good, feeling good. And the imagery, you would think, looks like your typical hip-hop video. 
But then when you start to watch it and the concept is actually different and spins it on its head on its head some, I just thought it would be a very cool thing to do. Despite having a limited budget, working on a very limited budget, I do enjoy having the freedom of being able to write when I want to write. In terms of when I worked with the team before, and being developed as an artist, one of the things that did get like frustrating is, you know, oh, well, you should write something like this instead, or you should make something like this instead. So I do strive to be very authentic as um, a rapper, as a hip hop artist. I strive to write what I'm feeling, how I'm feeling. So basically, I do, I definitely enjoy being in control. And it's something that I'm constantly like keeping in mind. Because when I first started this, one of the main inspirations who I ended up seeing was able to completely become big on his own without any label backing to this day was Chance the Rapper. Like when he first came out with Acid Rap, I was still in college. He came out with Acid Rap. Um, He's come out with the coloring book since. Um, He came out with all these projects and he was able to make it on his own. And still have control and a say in his music. And that that was basically my dream. Was to make it and make it on my own terms. And I do go back and forth a lot as an independent artist. Like on one hand, you know, with labels, you get funding. You are able to, you know, more easily reach a lot more people but you have more that you have to answer to when it comes to your creativity as well. I do enjoy not having an answer to someone when it comes to the type of songs that I want to write and the type of music videos that I want to make. I'm sure you also have goals after this release. What's next for you as an artist? What what are some of the things you are hoping to piece together for your next move? So one of so it's like several things that I want to piece together. I still eventually want to be in Los Angeles. I do want to reach a wider array of people. Want to have more 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 of an audience. I plan on putting myself out there more in terms of um, you know talking to the media, getting my name out there. I've also been wanting to focus more so as well on creating music videos. I do have another video planned out um, coming soon that I want to shoot. I want to create more content. Um, One of the ideas that I have in mind is doing kind of like a tiny desk type of performance, showing case of myself as a performer, improving on the performance end and uploading that to my YouTube I did finally make my own YouTube channel. So I have I have several things I want to have in mind. Just make more content and, again, put myself more out there, promote myself more. Um, also improve as performer. There are several things. And also creating more visuals. Um, throughout here on out, instead of trying to focus on, like, making full projects like EPs or mixtapes, Um, basically doing a lot with even putting my all in, not that I don't already, but put my all into like songs and, and visuals and creating content for them and things of that nature. You have a lot of people that you can study. Is there a particular person or people that you like to look up to, to draw inspiration from? Well, lately and from the start, besides I mentioned Chance the Rapper, but, you know, Kendrick Lamar. Um, I love Kendrick Lamar. When I started doing this, I wanted to be basically like a female version of, of Kendrick Lamar because I wrote, I would write a lot more conscious music. Um, that's someone who I study a lot, as well as another one is Childish Gambino. Um, I love Childish Gambino. I love how very versatile he is in his music. Um, He can make rap music one minute, and then the next minute he can make more so funk music, things of that nature. I study him as well. Um, Those are some, those have been the two of my main, most consistent inspirations. And of course, being in Houston, Texas, and being a female rapper, of course, another one that I got mentioned is Megan Thee Stallion. Um, 
someone who came from literally the ground up here in the area, from the area. Um, I've been born and raised here. I wasn't even born and raised here, but for her to do that and see how she came up and learning about her come up, that's another one more recently who I've been you know, looking up to. And before we let you go, by the way, we're talking to MJ, the rapper, and you have your eyes set on Los Angeles. I think you mentioned that a few times. Is that mm-hmm. something that you've seen in the near future, or what do you see as far as you making some moves to go out to L.A., maybe even to collab with someone out there? I definitely see in the near future. <clears throat> if it was up to me, it would be by next year. Um, Lord willing, ancestors willing, spirit willing <laughs> next year. Yeah. But definitely in my future, LA is is like what in, in collab with there, working with other artists out there, um, exploring, you know, again, reaching a more wider array of people. Not that you can in Houston, but definitely out there as well. And so, so far, your journey in the music industry with all that you went through and the whole determination to do this independently was some of the things that you learned throughout your journey so far trying to pursue your music career? Well, I've learned that it takes a lot of consistency and patience and dedication Um, I've learned that it's more than just making the music. If you want to put yourself out there as an artist, you really have to put yourself out there as a person. Um, You have to be willing to not just make the music and just release it, but promote yourself, networking, reaching out for help, never be afraid to reaching out for help. Um, You can, it's like, there's been moments where I've had to, had to be a bit more humble in terms of knowing my limitations and knowing the things that I need to work on in order to get to the next level. And, be- and so some those, those are definitely some of the lessons I've learned being an independent artist. And before we let you go, how is the best way someone can follow you on social media where they can interact with you? Definitely. So I'm always on Instagram. My Instagram is at MJM, the rapper, no spaces, no hyphens. Just at and then M J M T H E R A P P E R. That's my Instagram handle. That's my Twitter handle. And then my Facebook is even facebook.com uh, slash M J M the rapper. So follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. I'm always posting music updates, um, updates on what's going to happen next. Um, anything that you want to know, new releases. Um, I do have a master link as well. I have a link tree, basically my link tree slash MJM the rapper, where all of my social media links, all of my music links, all of my mu- my music is on all streaming platforms. Not Girl Summer, Moonlight, the way things were. You name it, it's on all streaming platforms. Once again, been talking to MJ. Willing to say thank you for taking time to talk to I and Refocus Radio. No problem. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it.